I'm Bobby Ryan with FCDallas.com. I'm here with a very special guest today in our series of one-on-one -on -one interviews. He's a World Cup champion, the one and only Richard Sanchez. Thanks so much for joining us, Richard. No, no, thank you for having me, Bobby. It's a, it's a special setting. We're inside the first team locker room. You are a first team player with FC Dallas. Tell me about uh, where does it all start for you? Where do you really look back and go, this was the beginning of all things uh, bringing you to where you are today? Um, well, it would all start with uh, my father, who who was always pushing me uh, to the limit to do better or training me. Um, he actually started a team out in um, the valley over in California, mm -hmm. in the San Fernando Valley. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and he well, it was it was through him that you know my my I guess you could say my career started. He uh, he formed a team. Um, were you a goalkeeper right away? I started as a, off as a forward, actually. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I started off as a forward, and then uh, I just he just started training me as a goalkeeper, and I stayed with that. That's great. Well, for those of you that don't know, Richard, at 17 years old, is now the first American player to win a World Cup. He's done so with the under-17 Mexican national team. You did that in front of over 100,000 fans at Azteca. Yeah. What was that moment like? Wow. Uh, a dream come true, really. I mean, it's something that I've been dreaming of ever since I was little. Uh, playing a World Cup was something that I dreamt of. And then growing up in a Mexican family to be able to play with the Mexican national team or to be able to play in the Azteca mm -hmm. um, and to be able to accomplish that goal, playing with a national team in a World Cup final in Azteca with, I mean, just over 100,000 people was, you know, really, uh, a, dr a dream come true. I was, I was just really happy. I thought it was fascinating to see throughout the World Cup, you were writing a blog for FCDallas.com, and this guy can write, by the way, incredible writer. Tell us about some of those moments, the defining moments in that tournament, the kind that really, if you look back on now, brings a chill to your spine. Tell us about some of those moments. Uh, well, I mean, there were great moments. Um, we, we've had a couple of, of, of great moments, the team and I. Um, I mean, throughout the World Cup, I had my ups and downs, um, but the, the, the good saves that I had were, you know, meant a lot to me being that, you know, it's a World Cup and I'm barely starting and all. But one of them that really stuck to me was the, uh, the PK shot that I saved against uh, Holland. And uh, that was just one thing that, that really stuck to me that, 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 that I saved that PK. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's fascinating. Richard, at six foot three, I've asked him to sit down so that it doesn't make me look small as I really am. But uh, Richard, I've known you for a couple of years. Let's look back to now. You are in Southern California. You're born in Southern California. Your family moves to Texas, and then it kind of your career starts to progress. Tell us about how that progression ended up taking you to Atletico Madrid with their under sixteen team. Actually, um, whenever we moved out here to Texas, uh, I was about a year after our move in here, we received a call from the Mexican national team. Um, they invited me to a camp for the U-15s, and this is whenever Chucho, Chucho Ramirez was still the coach for, for the youth teams. Mm -hmm. So I went out there, um, and it was a trip out to Oaxaca, out in, in Mexico, and that was my first camp. And it went well for me, um, and he liked the way I played. So then it was about a month after where we had a trip out to Spain in Barcelona. We played the, uh, it was called the Meek Cup. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I had, a, I had a pretty good tournament and uh, there were scouts from Atletico de Madrid and there was an agent who was really interested in working with me. So through that agent was how I got to, uh, to Atletico Madrid. Well, playing in a tournament with, with the Mexican national mm -hmm. team out in Barcelona is how I got over there. So you're with Atletico Madrid, and uh, you're in Spain. Talk to us about the extent of time you were there, and then you ended up coming back to Texas and playing with the FC Dallas Academy. I was there for eight months. Eight months. Um, I mean, it was a wonderful experience being able to meet people from around the world. I got to meet, you know, uh, people from Gambia, from Argentina, uh, so the, you know, Spaniards that are there. Um, you know, it was just a wonderful experience, and in the soccer there's, you know, also. Something, something that we all know is, is pretty good. Um, the experience was, was really good. I, well, like I said, I, I was there for eight months, and then I came back um, 
Were you living with a Spanish family when you were there? Is that how? No, I was living in a in a dorm, mm -hmm. like in a dorm kind of thing. With a lot with, of the, the under sixteen of, players. Yes, okay. yes, yeah, with a lot of the under sixteen players, and uh, I came back because of uh, my studies. My the uh, school wasn't wasn't going all well for me, being that I had trouble with comprehending the Spanish at the time, because at the time my Spanish wasn't all that that good. <laughs> So, I mean, I had trouble comprehending and writing and all that, and I decided, you know what, I'm, I want to come back and finish at least high school mm -hmm. um, and then just go from there. And that's what we did. Um, my parents, ever since I was little, they, they, they brainwashed me that uh, <laughs> education comes first, you know, your school comes first, and um, that's, that's what made me decide to want to wanna come back was to finish high school. Well, it's a change in the script. You come back to, back to FC Dallas now and you're in the academy. Uh, that's in 2009. It takes you up to signing a first team professional contract back in February of 2011. Take us through that little bit of an evolution of being a part with the FC Dallas Academy to now being a part with the first team. Yeah, well, I mean, I want to thank them for actually uh, having that confidence in me to actually sign a professional contract at you know, 17 years old and being a goalkeeper. It's, it's somewhat difficult nowadays. Um, so I want to thank them for that. And it's just, I mean, another dream come true. One of my goals that, I, that I've accomplished, that I feel that I've accomplished, was to play professionally. And to have uh, accomplished that at a young age was something really, really exciting for me. So, I mean, being able to sign a, a professional contract with them was, was really nice. But uh, it all started off with um, playing in the academy team when, when Oscar, I asked, I asked Oscar if I can try out whenever I came back from Atletico de Madrid. Um, and he said, yeah, I mean, come out and try out. Um, it went well for me. And then just from there, it progressed. And I was, I was offered a first team contract. <laughs> it's a quick progression, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it, but it is now, isn't it? Uh, I, I think it's fascinating now because you're 17 years old. You've won a World Cup uh, with the Mexican under-17 national team. Shellis Heinemann has said now that for your age, you're the most talented goalkeeper that he's ever seen. So there's an expectation now for you. How do you handle that? Um, I mean, I don't let it get to me, first of all. Uh, that's something I was always told was you know, those, those, those compliments that they give you to not let them get to your head. So I'm keeping my ground. Um, I'm not letting it get to my head. But uh, I mean, I, I know there's some stuff that I still need to to get better at and I mean what better way than to train with the first team to actually you know get better with or at uh, in those uh, little details and then to have Kevin Hartman, Chris Seitz and Josh Lambo there to to guide you is, is, is really helpful for me so uh, I mean I had like back to your, your question I mean I handle it pretty well um, I just work hard every 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 training camp or every training that we have here Let's talk about that relationship with uh, Kevin Hartman specifically. Against the Philadelphia Union, Kevin uh, set the all-time game started record for Major League Soccer. He started the most games of any player in the history of Major League Soccer. So you're looking now, he is at a, at a point in his career, it's been 15 years as a professional. You're 17 years old. Talk to us about that dynamic and that relationship of training with and underneath a guy with the resume of Kevin Hartman. Um, I want to tell you that uh, I, I would look up to Kevin Hartman whenever I uh, lived out in California and he was playing with the Galaxy. <laughs> I hope you tell him that all the time in training. I remember you when I was a little boy. <laughs> so I mean, I, I, I would look up to him and you know, I, would, I would always be like, oh, Kevin Hartman, I would, I would want to be like him. You know, that's what I would say when I, was, when I was younger. And to be able to train with him now is, is just like, whoa, it's mind blowing. You know, whenever I first find out that he, found out that he was coming over to Dallas, I was like, wow. This is crazy, you know, it's, it's actually something coming true, you know. But having a person like him, I mean, he's a great person. Um, he guides me as well with, with uh, the little mistakes that I make during, during practice. You know, he what are some me. of those coaching points? What are the kind of things that he shares with you? Is it about angle? Is it about communication? What are some of the details uh, it's, that he's I mean, a, a bit of everything, you know, a little bit of, uh, yeah, angles and then communication and, he, he, he lets me know, okay, well here, you should have done this to, to get to this, to this ball better, for example, mm -hmm. or you know, move your feet this way to get better to that ball. It's just little details that, uh, that he notices and points out to me that, that really help a lot. 
I thought it was fascinating to see at the Generation Adidas Cup, you're playing with uh, the FC Dallas Academy team. Uh, you had just gotten back from winning that World Cup with the Mexican U-17s. And playing in and around the games, the Chivas USA under 15 players came over to you and were asking you for your autograph. I thought that was absolutely fascinating to see. Tell me about what that must have been like for you. Yeah, um, well, I mean, it's good to see that, you know, we, are, we, we have uh, people actually watching the uh, U-17 World Cup out here in the United States, you know, especially the uh, the uh, Mexican heritage that that actually follows it, and and to have had them come up to me, um, congratulating me was, was something real emotional for me, um, and they were just awesome people. They were they would just joke around with me, messing around, and, uh, and it's wonderful. <laughs> so here we are, under 17 Mexican national team. Uh, what's your goals with that? At one point. You're going to have to make a decision, perhaps, if you continue to climb the, the ladder of success you've been climbing. Mexico, United States, all those kinds of things. Those are good problems to have, aren't they? Yeah, uh, something my dad would tell me, too. It's a wonderful problem to have. <laughs> but I'll be honest, I mean, my heart is out for, for Mexico. It's, it's been like that since I was little. Um, I would see Osvaldo Sanchez... Uh, in the in in the be, or in front of the net, and I'd be like, you know, I want to, I want to be like that guy. When I want to represent Mexico, and ever since I saw him, I think it was the 2002, yeah, the 2002 World Cup. But he he played it. You know, the U.S. beat them in the quarterfinals that year. Right? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> coming now to the future, um, now he's you know some some a goalkeeper that I would look up to, um, as well as Jorge Campos. Uh, you know, those those were the two guys that actually made me want to represent Mexico and I mean being that I was also raised with a Mexican family um, it's just I, I felt Mexican at heart since since day one. So if you feel like you're uh, you know sort of climbing this ladder you're trying to get up and get to a place what is that place where do you want to be next? Um, well I mean I said short-term goals and long-term goals um, the short-term goals here would be just train hard here at FC Dallas, um, hopefully, you know, make it up into the into the starting lineup. Um, but I know for that that I have to work hard and 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 just stay focused. But I mean, long-term goals would be wanting to play with the uh, Mexican national team, their senior team, and uh, just I mean, see see where, how it goes from there. I mean, I always say to leave it in God's hands, you know. And my parents, my family, and I are really really religious about that, so. That's what I always say is just leave it in his hands and whatever happens, happens and we'll go from there. Richard, thanks for joining us. No, thank you. Now, uh, thank you so much to Richard Sanchez, obviously. First American player to ever win a World Cup with the Mexican under-17 national team. Such a great honor for you, for FC Dallas as well. Uh, make sure you keep coming back to fcdallas.com for this one-on-one -on -one series of interviews that we'll continue to have here. And again, thank you so very much for joining us. For Richard Sanchez, I'm Bobby Ryan.